welcome once again to the Tabernacle Baptist Church of Roanoke, Texas. Today we're privileged to be able to come and share together the Word of God. I trust and pray that if you're unsaved, it will bring you to the place to accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior. And if you are a believer, it will encourage you. If you have your Bibles or can reach a Bible, I would invite you to turn with me to the Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15. And I want to speak to you this morning on the message I've entitled, Hail the Forgotten Message. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, for whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Heavenly Father, bless the reading and the presentation and the preaching of your word. And we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> I can hear some say now, why a message on hell when it's such a negative message. But dear friend, I would remind you along with myself that Jesus had twice as much to say about hell as he did about heaven. You might say, well, preacher, I'm not going to hell. I don't need to hear a sermon on hell. I'm saved. But you know, a message on hell is for Christians as well as it is for the lost person. A message on hell should stir and motivate a saved person to be more concerned about the lost. You know, the mission that God left the believer is to evangelize and share the gospel message that people might be informed to leave this life without salvation in Christ as an eternal destiny in hell. And we're to have compassion. One of the sadness that you read in the Psalms is I looked on my left hand and on my right hand and no man cared for my soul. Is that an indictment against the church today? Have we lost our compassion for those who are not prepared for eternity? Have we failed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that are condemned by sin and are out of the security of the salvation that Christ provided on the cross? You see, we have neighbors that are lost and on the way to hell. We have friends, even family members that are on their way to hell. Do we have no compassion? Have we lost sight of eternity is forever and to depart this life without Jesus Christ is an assurity. The Bible said in the text that we read, whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We need a greater concern for those who are on, our, on their way to hell because they've been not given the message of Christ or they've not been prayed for or they've not been encouraged to come. I would like for us to bring ourselves to some current information concerning eternity. Number one, we have forgot death, then comes eternity. Somewhere in our deception, we seem to think that death ends it all. But dear friend, that's a lie put out by the devil. Death really begins life 
You see, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 says, And as it is appointed unto man once to die. We're reminded in the garden when God told Adam and Eve, If you partake of the tree where I command you not, surely you shall die. That was a physical death, but it was also looking to the forward future, but it was also a spiritual death. But after this, the judgment. You see, no one dies, and that's the end. There are two phases of life I want us to be reminded of again this morning. Number one, there's the temporal life. Last usually less than a hundred years. But number two, ladies and gentlemen, of which we forgot, we've stopped being concerned about, is the eternal life that lasts forever. You see, we are a soul, and a soul exists forever. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, if you have your Bible. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And listen now, the importance is this. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You cannot kill the soul of humanity. Therefore, the Bible tells us that somewhere in eternity, our destiny has been made through the decisions that we've made. In Christ, we shall depart from this world and be present with him. Without Christ, we'll depart this world and find ourselves in hell. I want us to notice some things concerning hell. Number two, a saved person goes to heaven when they die. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. We are confident, completely settled, cannot be shaken. I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. You see, because a person accepts Jesus Christ as personal Savior, because of the finished work that Christ accomplished on the cross. You see, Christ became sin who knew no sin, that we might be able through faith in that finished work of his death, burial, and resurrection, come to him in repentance, confessing our sin and accepting him as our personal savior, to be removed from the condemnation that sin has called upon us because of Adam's sin. By trusting Christ, we are made free of the condemnation that was over us outside of him. Therefore, because we have been born again as a believer, John 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, physical, yet shall he live, eternal. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. <clears throat> Believest thou this? You see, a saved person has the assurance that because Christ was raised from the grave, that they too will be raised because of the victory he has over death. He has taken the sting out of death. Therefore, we need to be sure that we have made that commitment to Christ because I bring you back to Hebrews chapter 9 in verse 27. And it's appointed unto man wants to die. Ecclesiastes 8.8 8 assures us that nobody can defer that appointment. It cannot be rescheduled. It cannot be denied. God has given every individual a time of which they will depart into eternity. And that opportunity to accept that destination is given during life. In Christ, we'll be absent from the body and present with him. Outside of Christ, when we go out into eternity, of which we all will, as an unbeliever, 
as an unbeliever, I want us to look next at the unsaved person. A lost person goes to eternal hell. Look at Luke chapter 16, verse 22 and 23. And it came to pass. That means it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You can deny it. You can procrastinate about it. But because God has said it, there is coming a day when you and I will depart this present world into the eternal destiny in which we have made our decision. In Christ, heaven. Outside of Christ, hell. Hell. And there's no means to change that message. The Bible says that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, a type of heaven, because Lazarus had accepted the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The rich man also died and was buried. Now I want you to notice verse 23, because he had rejected the message that was given him about the finished work of Messiah who would become sin who knew no sin that through faith in him righteousness could be obtained whereby we would be removed from condemnation and would be able to come into the presence of the holy God who must must have sin paid for look at it and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off. And A, notice it, Lazarus in his bosom. Today it's said, well, they're better off since they died. No more pain or suffering. Now listen to me real carefully. I would not offend anybody, but listen to me. That is true. Only if they're born again. That statement is given consistently and constantly. But I want you to pause for a moment and understand something. True, they have been released from all that physical pain and suffering. Only if they know Christ as personal Savior. If they were not born again, no, no, no. Their suffering has just begun because they did not receive Jesus Christ as personal Savior. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It doesn't make any difference what the physical condition was at the time of death. If you die without Christ, they or you must realize will be in a much worse condition because you see, we get a picture through the verse that we just read in Luke chapter 16 and verse 24. The person in hell will still have all their senses. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. I want you to see the five senses that this man still has people thinking that when you leave their life, this life, that's all there is to it. That's deception of the devil. He's blinded your mind lest you believe the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. As a believer, it's the freedom from all. But as an unbeliever, it's the beginning of all 
that there is in the way of punishment. Look, first of all, they will be able to see. Now, if you study that out, they'll be able to see those people in heaven, but they'll not be able to see anybody where it's around them in hell. It'll be a tunnel vision, seeing what the blessings were of receiving Christ as personal Savior. Secondly, they will be able to hear. What will they be able to hear? Luke chapter 13 and verse 28. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. You will have throughout all of eternity to constantly view the blessings of heaven and the reasons that you missed it was that you rejected. You rejected the gift that God gave for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Think about that. Think about that. They will be able to smell that fiery, sulfur environment. They'll be able to taste. But I personally believe one of the worst of all punishments in hell is will be that remembrance. And let me read it again. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 28, there, will be, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets <clears throat> when you see the glories and the blessings of heaven constantly in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Oh dear friend, under the sound of my voice, I know and I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I know there are those under my voice today that have no assurance of heaven or doubting that you've come to Christ as personal Savior with the outcome. There's never been a more needful time for you to settle once and for all your condition and your relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father. But I will in no wise cast him out that comes by the Son to the Father. And that's what God said. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you a question in closing this message. Why would you go to hell? Why would you go to hell? Look at 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward. How long has God encouraged you to get saved? How many times have you been witness to? How many invitations have you had not only to come to Christ, but to come to church? How many gospel tracts have you received? How many radio messages, how many TV messages have you listened to or viewed and the Holy Spirit was tugging at your heart, bringing about that conviction that you know in the privacy of your own heart that you're not ready to step out into eternity? Oh, let me ask you, why would you choose to go to hell? And it's your choice. You see, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness. But his long suffering to usward. Now I want you to look at this. Not willing that any should perish. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not God's will for you to go to hell. God doesn't send you to hell. You choose to go to hell. By rejecting Jesus Christ as personal Savior. 
Because God's will, God's desire, is that you not perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, you can find absolutely no reason in God's holy word for a person to go to hell but by personal choice of neglecting Jesus Christ only. You can't find any other reason in the word of God. Jesus said, I come to seek and to say that which is lost. The Bible said very plainly that God shall love the world. Emphasizing you or me or anybody, regardless who they are, what they are and where they've been, is excluded from the grace of God except by unbelief. Now, this world is full of discrimination because it's under the influence of Satan and sin. But God is no respecter of persons. Look at it. You see, if you go to hell, in fact, you're an intruder. You're absolutely an intruder by going to hell. Because it was not intended. You see, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. The scripture proves it. Look at Matthew 25 and verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left and on the, on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. And look at the last part of the verse. Prepared for the devil and his angels. See, hell was not created for humanity, but humanity, having loved darkness rather than light, rejects the gift of all gifts through Jesus Christ and makes a choice to go to hell. See, hell is not for humanity. And you know what the sadness is, dear friend? How many... How many, in spite of God's goodness, long-suffering, love, and mercy, and gift of Jesus Christ, will reject that gift. Reject that gift of salvation through Christ and go to hell. But let me say to you this morning, it's heaven or it's hell. And the choice is yours to make today heaven in christ hell without christ you see the bible said very plainly i'm the way i'm the truth and i'm the life and no man cometh to the father but by me but let's take the admonishment that paul said today is the day of salvation look at second corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 for he saith I have heard the inner time accepted. God's willing to listen to you today as you cry out for God to forgive you through Christ, repenting of your sins and trusting what Jesus did on the cross. Lord, I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me as a sinner and to save me. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's today. Look at it. For he saith, I have heard thee in a special time. And that special time is what? Today. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee, or I presented to you, or I'm standing here inviting you through Christ to be saved. Behold, now. See, how many people will know what to do, but will not do it? Not only do you need to know that you need to be saved, but you need to accept by calling out to Christ to receive that salvation. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Let me conclude by asking you this final question. Two parts. Have you made your reservation for heaven? Have you? Can you say, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded. He's able to keep that which I've committed 
unto him against that day? Are you in the no-so knowing that you haven't received Christ? Or perhaps you're in that in between, well, I hope I've accepted Christ. No, today, today is the day that you make that commitment in a no-so. Are you sure that you're going to heaven? If not, the other alternative is hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I plead with you from the bottom of my heart. There's nothing that you'll ever need to know like you need to know that you're prepared to leave this world. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for Jesus Christ who secured that pardon and that new birth that we could experience through the finished work upon the cross. Lord, I know under the sound of the message, whenever it's presented to those that will listen, there are those that have not accepted Christ. There are those that hope so, or maybe so. Lord, that's not good enough in light of eternity. Have them to come to realization they either are in Christ or out of Christ. They are born again or they are not born again. Let them come to the conclusion that in Christ, in Christ alone is salvation and accept him today. Then, Father, may you rekindle the fire in our heart to realize the privilege we have of not only knowing Christ as personal Savior and being ready for heaven, but how dare us to have the indictment against us that somebody would look on the left hand or the right hand and find that no man cared for their soul. Oh, Father, relight that heart. Relight that heart with a desire to see people saved. We have friends. We have acquaintance. We have family that are not right with you and will spend eternity in hell. Oh, how can we be so cold-hearted? How can we be so indifferent? Burn within our heart and our soul. Lord, we're talking about eternity. We're not talking about like a TV program. You can get killed on one show and become a hero on another show. We're talking about eternal life. The Bible said it's appointed done a man once to die, but after that, the judgment. Help us, Lord. Help us have that desire to see people saved. Bless this message and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you folks. God loves you and we love you. Please, please, please don't turn down salvation and spend eternity in hell. Be prepared through Christ and when God calls you, you'll go home to be with him for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen.